said breast milk is crazy. Get off my internet right now. I was wondering, yeah, boy, I'm still at this bitch. I had to block you, but you still gotta watch this shit. Cause you know, a rocket like me, no bra tight tea, slick back, ponytail, feeling like I'm iced tea. What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Mika, your hostess with the Moses. And on today's video, we do not have a vlog. We have my first sit down video that I've been wanting to do for a while now. So tap in. As you can probably tell from the title, today I'm going to be reading negative reviews of products that I love on Sephora. I've seen people do this video on YouTube before, but I think the nature of beauty YouTube has changed tremendously over the last five years. So this is not something that's popular right now. However, I did not originate this idea. So I just wanted to put that out there. I wanted to find creative ways to talk about makeup on my channel and sit down form videos, but not just like the regular degla reviews or reading what products are coming out and all that other stuff. As someone who's been working in the beauty industry for about 10 plus years now as a freelance writer, a blogger, a content creator, so on and so forth, I really wanted to make this video because I have enough skin in the game to know that beauty products are not one size fits all. There are gonna be products that I love that people hate and vice versa. There are gonna be products that could be the holy grail of holy grails and most people agree that they are like that and people are just gonna be like, girl, that product is trash. I'm not gonna hold you any further. Let's get into it. Let me open up the Sephora app, okay? This is all jokes, by the way, so if you find me and I'm dragging your review, I sigh, I sigh. All right, so let's go. The first product that we are gonna read negative reviews on is my favorite, my One Size Beauty Ultimate Blurring Setting Powder. I typically use the shade Translucent, though I also have the Dark Deep shade. Let's start off by reading the facts about this product. The mini size of this is $18, and the large size of this powder is $34. I purchased this powder a while ago, and it's still pretty full. I wanna say this may have been my second one, but I'll confirm that and put it on the screen. This is a powder that I've been using for years at this point, and I absolutely love it. It's a matte finish powder, it's a loose powder, long wearing, and then it also says that it helps to create a silky smooth smooth texture on the skin. It helps skin adhesion. I'm not sure what that means. My thought is that it um, will figure it out. It also helps blur fine lines and improve the look of textured skin, okay? 24 hour shine control, all day wear, sweat proof, no flashback. Some big claims, some heavy claims there. All right, the reason why I love this powder, I have it on right now, let me scoot up a little bit. I just feel like it looks flawless. I don't have pores. There's a 404 error on my face right now because I don't have pores. I love this powder. It makes my makeup look absolutely seamless. And if you go on my Instagram, TikTok, or maybe even my YouTube shorts, you will probably never see me do a makeup video out using this powder. Point blank, period. Okay, all right, the reviews on the powder, let's see. Bought this with my beauty points and was expecting so much more from this. Looks cakey, mattifying doesn't last. I look shiny no matter what. I'm oily girl and I give this product so much tries. And it has, wait, I'm an oily girl. I gave this product so much, so many tries. It just does not work as stated. First of all, reading the reviews, be hard because people be very emotional writing these reviews, especially when they're negative and the spelling errors and the grammar errors be, you feel me? She did add pictures that I'm not gonna show because I'm not gonna blast her like that. And her skin is very, very oily. It also looks like it may be acne prone, so on and so forth. I just wanna say, girl, I understand products make claims of all day wear, 24 hour shine control. If you really think one product is going to stop your oil glands from producing oil, like you set your expectations too high. And as a person who has normal to combination oily skin, I could also say that oily skin needs a lot more than just a powder to make it mattified and keep it mattified, right? You gotta worry about how you prepping your skin. What is your daily skincare routine like? On top of that, primer. Are you even using primer? Are you using like tips and tricks that oily girls do, like setting their primer with powder before putting a liquid foundation. What liquid foundation formula are you using? Okay, I got all the questions. Oily girls get on my nerves because y'all don't be trying to really do the work and y'all be blaming the one product that y'all think is gonna save y'all lives. Like, be for real. Anyway, not too much on her. Next review. Mediocre. This product was mediocre. I walked a mile to get it 
and I walk a mile to return it. First of all, where you where you live? Why are you walking to Sephora? No shade, no shade, no shade. That wasn't shade. I'm just like I don't understand it. Like why you have to put that in there? Like what? Walking a mile is nothing, in my opinion. I'm from New York. We walk a mile. We walk five miles. And it's nothing to us. So it's just like, girl, please, please, please. You mad because you walked to Sephora? You mad? And if you walked all the way to Sephora for just that powder, that's on you. That ain't got nothing to do with her. Let's see. You just gonna move on. This one don't have too many outlandish reviews, so. Oh, here goes one. Made me look like Shrek. I can't tell if this was a, what? I can't tell if this was a school ears doing. Well, I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I can't tell if this was a school ears doing or not. But when I wore this powder and returned home, my under eyes were green. Maybe it wasn't my shade, but it's said to be a universal shade. So, and this person is a medium tan, medium tan skin tone with dry hair. Um, this powder absolutely has zero color. I am what they consider deep dark and I use the translucent and it doesn't change the color of my skin. I just put it on the back of my hand and you don't see any color. So my guess, girl, it was your concealer. Stop lying on this powder. I don't know, girl, please. We are gonna move to the next product because the girls is just saying the same thing about my one size beauty blurring set of powder. The next product I don't have with me right now because I forgot where I put it. And also I need to free up. The Sephora sale is going on right now so I low key need to add that to my cart. It just started. But it's the Ami Cole Treatment Lip Oil, particularly in the shade Essence. I'm uh, no, excuse me, in the shade Excellence. That's my favorite shade. It's a brown nudie rose kind of color. Great for dark skin girls. Great if you have darker lips like I do and I think it's chef's kiss. This lip oil is $20. It's black owned at Sephora. It's vegan, high shine, cruelty free, and hydrating. Some of the other claims on the product is that it has a couple of different oils to help um, moisturize and provide long lasting hydration to your lips. And it's also meant to have shades that flatter the different skin tone. I only have tried one of the colors, so I can only attest to that one being super flattering on everyone that I've ever seen it on, including myself. Now, you gotta get into the review. Okay. I'm only going to read the reviews that features the color that I purchased. One person said, the color of this is gorgeous. I swatched it on my hand and was excited to put it on when I got home. I was extremely disappointed when I did. It was thick and sticky and it felt like a gross glob. I would buy the Tower 28 lip jellies instead. I return this product. Well, it sounds like to me, ma'am, that you wanted Tower 28 jellies to begin with, but you let somebody influence you into buying something that does not fit your needs. That is what happens in this current state of social media. People flock to things because they hear it works from somebody else or they hear it's hyped up on TikTok, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, it does not solve a problem that you're having yourself. Therefore, you're disappointed when you try it. Anywho, let's see. This one says, it looks like I'm in a minority here. I found this sticky and excellence is a weird brown, not rosy at all. So it does say that this person is fierce skin tone with green eyes and brunette hair. I could only be drawing conclusions, but I think this type of rosy brown color was meant to be nude for like deeper skin tones. It is a black owned brand, therefore the target audience could be anyone who loves skincare or makeup, whatever you classify this lip oil as. At the end of the day, I definitely do think the colors are more geared towards looking better on brown girls who often have to search high and low for color options that make sense for us. I'm sorry, miss girl, but listen, I've been in the game long enough to know it's been very hard finding colors that suit me. So I'm standing by excellence and she not weird. She, you weird. You the weird one. You the weirdo. Okay. All right. Way too sticky to the point that a strand of my hair got caught in it while I was wearing it. I went to pull away the strand of hair instead of coming out the gloss. It came out my scalp. The packet. First of all, the person didn't even finish this review. Wait, I gotta run that back. Did I read that correctly? I'm sorry. The grandma and punctuation is throwing me off. I went to pull away the strand of hair and instead of coming out the gloss, it came out of my scalp. <laughs> Wait, I'm so confused. So you think that the gloss pulled your hair out? I'm so confused. 
That ain't got nothing to do with that lip treatment oil. And that has everything to do with shedding. Please, girl, get off my internet right now. This lip oil didn't have but so many negative reviews. I see why she a goodie. All these products that I'm reading reviews of, I've never looked at the reviews, so this is really me just seeing for the first time what people think of the products that I love. The next product is going to be Topicals Faded Serum. This serum is a brightening and clearing serum for uneven skin tone. I've been using it for quite some time now, but to be completely honest, I have not been consistent as of recently with it. I actually just have not been consistent with my skin care overall but I will say at the height of me being consistent with my skincare and using topicals faded is it the work for my dark spots I began suffering from adult acne when I was in like my early 20s ish my acne was crazy I went to the dermatologist at that time and they gave me I want to say two topical subscriptions no three topical subscriptions subscriptions shop three topical prescriptions not to be confused with the brand topicals you might understand where the name come from now I was also taking oral antibiotics right now I have on makeup but I would definitely insert a clip of my natural skin I really need to get back in the booth and see an esthetician and start getting chemical pills again because that did the most work for me topicals faded serum is definitely one of my favorite at home treatments for my acne and I'm interested to see what the girls got to say about topicals I kind of have an idea of what they want to say about but on the internet, you never know. All right, so a topical serum. This is the 1.7 ounce size, and this costs 80 bucking, $38. And then the mini size, which is a half ounce of product, costs $18. It's vegan, cruelty free, what it is. A hyperpigmentation safe serum that visibly reduces stubborn discoloration, post blemish marks, scars, and spots for all ethnicities and skin shades. For normal dry combination and oily skin. And it says the skin concerns that should use this product, dark spots, redness, acne, and blemishes. It's a lightweight cream. Key ingredient, ingredient excuse me, niacinamide, which reduces the look of discoloration and post acne marks and uneven, uneven skin tone. Azelic acid, visibly brightens skin tone, improves texture, and reduces the look of blemishes. Tranexamic acid, which visibly minimizes spots, dark passage, dark patches, and post blemish marks. Daily use. And you should see results within as little as two weeks, say for all skin tones and ethnicities. So let's get into reviews, the one star reviews. First of all, this has a 3.7 overall rating <laughs> on Sephora. That is crazy to me. It's crazy to me. But we gotta see what the girls are saying. Okay. Please improve the scent. Smells awful. Couldn't stand wearing it on my face because of the smell. Still have the entire tube unused. I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let you cook because you ain't never lie. I can't withhold you. Faded topical serum to me smells like a relaxer, okay? I haven't had a relaxer in at least a decade at this point. But this right here, it takes me back. It's to sit in, in a chair, get in a touch up, then reason up my forehead and my ears so I don't get burned. When they apply the relaxer, I start to feel like, damn, I should have never scratched my scalp last night. It, it does have that kind of smell to me. I ain't gonna hold you. Let's see what else the girl. I feel like everybody's just gonna be like, the smell is unbearable. It says, do not buy. I got this product because I heard great reviews about it, but in my opinion, it smelled like dog food. I do not recommend. <laughs> I do not recommend buying this product. Babe, what kind of food you feeding your dog? Because <laughs> I just said that this smells like a relaxer to me. So I'm outnumbered. Apparently other people think it smells like dog food and cat food. I think y'all crazy. And you think it smells like dog food? I do not want to get PETA or nobody involved in this. So, oh. <laughs> we just gonna move on. You came to the wrong aisle. You came to the wrong product. Another skincare product that I love, that I've been buying for years at this point is Fenty Skin Fat Water Milky Toner. Just to give a little bit of context, when Fenty Skin first dropped their skincare line, I did buy all the products. It was only three at the time, and I did an initial review on my blog. In that blog, I did a review of the toner that was available at that time, which is the regular fat water toner, and my skin 
hated it. At first, it loved it. It made my skin super supple the first few times that I used it. After that, I felt like my moisture barrier was being damaged. My skin was constantly dry. It was irritated, starting to break out, and it was definitely giving like moisture barrier damage of some sort. When they dropped the Milky Toner, on the other hand, I was like, you know what? I need to try this. Even though I have normal to combination oily-ish kind of skin, my skin prefers hydrating, super hydrating toners. And so far, this has proven to be one that my skin can tolerate, and that's why I haven't switched up. If we locked in, ain't no switching up. That's why I haven't switched up in a few years. Let's see what the girls is talking about my toner, what they saying about my toner. This size of this toner is gonna be $35. It's gone up in price over the years as everything else has. And of course, it's black owned in Sephora, or I guess it's black funded kind of, sort of, but we want to say. Um, it's supposed to be good for pores. It also has niacinamide similar to the topical serum. So that's another key ingredient for dark spots, hyperpigmentation, so on and so forth. And it also says that it's good for dark spots and also dryness. The description. A toner essence with a thick, milky texture that's packed with hydrated ingredients to visibly plump, plump skin and support a strong moisture barrier. So, just reading the description and me describing why I didn't like the original formula, you should understand why she's bae. Because it helped my moisture barrier. For all skin types, and again, for skin concerns, dark spots, pores, and dryness. And some key ingredients are tamarind and hyaluronic acid, both for hydration and visibly plumping the skin. It has some mineral PCAs, which help bind moisture and support skin structure. And then pectinol, which hydrates and fortifies skin's moisture barrier, and also niacinamide, which we've gone through a thousand times at this point. Cheese Bay, this is a day and nighttime product for me, and I'm running out. I probably should add that to my cart while the sale is going. It's time to get into the negative reviews. What else is smart to say about my Milky Toner? It says, wanted to love it, tried a bunch of times, but the coconut oil left little itchy bumps on my chin that burned. I am gonna hold you. I've never looked at the full ingredients of this. Oh, it does have coconut oil. Okay, it has coconut oil. And yes, coconut oil is known to be a comedogenic, a comedogenic, am I saying that word correctly? A comedogenic product? like meaning that it clogs your pores. And me personally, I cannot use pure coconut oil on my skin. I can, however, use formulas that have coconut oil if they're not like at the very, very top of the list. For this formula, coconut oil appears as the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as the eighth ingredient. So that makes sense to me as to why it doesn't clog my skin. So, okay, girl, you have a point. You have a point. You have a point. It says, horrendous smell. Smells like fermented breast milk. I legit returned it to go back to the OG formula. First of all, the fact that you said it smelled like fermented breast milk and your skin can handle the original formula, I know you can fight, so I'm not even going to say too much about you. Fermented breast milk is crazy. Like, it barely has a smell to it. Fermented breast milk is crazy. Where did you even get that from? Like, girl, this don't even smell like nothing for real. If you ever use other Fenty skin products, I'll say maybe the fence of the cleanser, the eye cream, what else I've used? Uh, Butter Drop, the body cream. They all have like that very faint, what is it like, um, beige cherry or something. That's what it smelled like. It do not smell like, I don't know what breast milk smell like, if I'm being honest. But it, I, I can't imagine it smell like breast milk. Girl, you reached. You just want to return it, girl. They have a return policy for a reason. You ain't gotta lie. You do not have to lie. Next review. I wanted to love this, but it burned the first layer of my face and I was so swollen. I heard good things about this from my fave TikTok influencers, but it just didn't work for me. So once again, we have a case of the TikTok influence. It's very clear that you understand just because your favorite influencer influenced you to buy it, that they are A, not liable for your mistakes. Sorry, I'm not on me to laugh. They're not liable for your mistakes, but also it seems like you do recognize that like skincare especially is not one size fits all. 
So baby girl did attach photos and yeah, this tore her skin up. It tore her skin up. And what she described as like the first layer of her skin being burned, that's how it felt to me when I used the original formula. But my skin didn't look like this. It looks like she has like small actual like bumps and stuff forming. And she's fair as skin, so like you can see the redness and everything patching up. I'm sorry, Buki. I'm sorry I ain't work for you or whatever. I hope that you figure this out. Damn, this happened in January 2024, so your skin may still be healing right now. I would recommend stop. <laughs> stop scrolling the TikTok. Stop scrolling the TikTok for the recommendations for your skin. Maybe it may be worth at this point seeing a professional first. And definitely lay off adding anything new into your skincare regimen. But also do your homework outside of looking at suggestions from TikTok influencers. Shit, even myself. Do what works for you. What makes sense for your skin. Let's see. It says, don't buy. This product is horrible for sensitive skin. Burn my skin badly. The fragrance is very strong like a perfume. What kind of perfume you wear? Cause this, this fragrance is not strong like nobody perfume unless your perfume is from Dollar Tree. No offense if you actually buy perfume for, from Dollar Tree, they might got some bops. But what I'm trying to say is the scent A is not strong and like most skincare products, even the topicals faded serum, once you put it on, that smell dissipates so quickly. Like it does not last forever, like girl. It don't last forever. It do not even smell like a perfume. And if it do smell like a perfume, it's giving very much skin scent like something that you gotta be like to even smell don't drag it oh child let me go check this chicken it has never gave perfume you dragged it you really did drag it for the last product it is actually a perfume well perfume oil one of my favorites is you probably can't even see it in my hand. It's Ness Madagascar Vanilla Perfume Oil. I have the small one which retails for $35 and I believe the larger one which comes in a dropper bottle is about $102 now. The price also went up. I love this perfume oil because it's great to layer with things. Some perfumes that I can think off the top of my head that I love layering this oil with is Fenty Eau de Parfum. Especially if you feel like Fenty is a little bit, it has a little bit of a bite to it. Some people say it smells old lady-ish, things of that nature. I love it with Fenty because it does give it more, in my opinion, soft feminine touch to it. I also love it with Zadig and Voltaire. This is her, that is a very creamy, vanilla -y. I sound like one of them TikTok girls. It's a very creamy, vanilla, I think even marshmallow scented perfume, and I love it. And when I put it with this, it's just like chef's kiss. Another perfume I could think of that I really love to mix this oil with is Mancera Roses Vanilla, which of course is a rose and vanilla base perfume. It's so fresh and uh, it's one of my favorite perfumes of all time. I wear it a lot in the spring and the summertime, but honestly, I was just wear it whenever. It just smells so good on me. Every time I wear that perfume, that and Zedic and Voltaire, this is her, I get the most compliments on. Hands down. Let's talk about notes in the perfume. The fragrance family is warm and spicy. The scent type is warm and sweet Vermont. Keynotes, Madagascar vanilla bean, vanilla orchid, and coconut. Let's get into the reviews, shall we? All right. This smells like old school Bath and Body Works vanilla spray I wore in middle school. Save your money and go to Bath and Body Works. How about no? No shades of people that still wear the scents from Bath and Body Works, but it's not giving no old school Bath and Body Works nothing. When you see here vanilla, you definitely think it's like super sweet and like super girly, girly and maybe even a little childish, but it's something about the coconut in this, I think, that gives it a little bit more depth. It's not like a basic sweet vanilla perfume. It really isn't, so you tried it. You tried it. Absolutely foul smelling. It isn't a sweet, warm vanilla perfume whatsoever. It has a sickening burnt undertone. Can't believe people pay $100 to smell like this. And do, and muck, and do. First of all, it's not a burnt smell. It's just, like I said before, it's just not that basic syrupy vanilla scent that people may go for. I like vanilla scents that feel a little bit more elevated a little bit more age appropriate so to speak if you can't take the heat which it sounds like you can't because you think it's burnt stay out the kitchen stay out the kitchen while the cooks is cooking thank you 
I'm so sad to be writing this review. I expected this to smell incredible, but every time I smell it, it just smells like bug repellent. I just be wondering, like, did y'all get y'all noses off of Shein or AliExpress? Because what are you smelling? Bug repellent? First it was a breast milk and the face toner for me. And now bug repellent? It's just like, girl, if you ain't like the perfume, that's fine. But bug repellent is crazy. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you and it's not the perfume. You ever thought about that? Okay. Okay. Next. This smells like the primate enclosure at the zoo with a hint of vanilla. I'm pretty sure I've been to the zoo and been to a primate enclosure, but when I tell you, I have never smelled anything in my life that I could describe that smells like that, that is insane to me. And you need professional help. Primate, like, okay, you drag the hell out of this perfume. It was never giving primate. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't care if y'all don't like her. That's more for me. It's more for me. And what? I don't care. Thank you so much for tuning in to my first sit down YouTube video. If all has went well, I have edited and uploaded this and got past my fear of sitting down and talking to the camera for hours straight. Definitely check out some of the videos on my channel while you're here. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content. Comment below if I mention some products that are some of your personal favorites or if I mention products that you hate. I definitely wanna do more of these videos because I just think it's so intriguing like how much I can love something and someone despises it. So if you enjoyed this, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on my channel. Okay, bye.